Hello, this is Socially Triggered, and this video is going to be on Black Lives Matter. Um, I really want to get into why I don't support Black Lives Matter. And it's not that I don't support Black people. I actually have lots of Black friends, and uh, I support them, and I don't want to see them abused. And uh, I, I always feel like, as a white person, you have to qualify when you say you don't support Black Lives Matter, which is... It's kind of crazy because uh, if you actually know anything about Black Lives Matter, you'd be like, well, why would anybody support <laughs> Black Lives Matter? Because Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter uh, is just such a bad organization. And I want to make a distinction that there is um, two things going on here. There's an organization called Black Lives Matter, and then there are protesters that say Black Lives Matter. Now, those are actually two separate things. However, the net effect is the same. So what happens is uh, you get these protesters that you know maybe have some legitimate concerns, uh, that they're, they're worried that the police are using abusing their authority over them. Maybe that's a legitimate concern. And they're, they're using this, this slogan of Black Lives Matter to sort of say, hey, look, um, we, we have a problem. Please pay attention to us. Our lives matter too. And that's really what they're trying. That's the message that they're trying to say. And, um, you know, the all lives matter people are, are, are right too. I, I actually think that all lives matter. But I, I get where the Black Lives Matter protesters <laughs> are coming from, that they, they, they're saying, well, our lives matter too. And um, what, what we have to understand is, though, that when protesters or anybody uses that slogan, Black Lives Matter, um, it is actually helping the organization. So when people, when the politicians hear it, when, when people that um, learn about Black Lives Matter, whenever it's get promoted through these protests or through the media coverage, well, it actually goes to help support the organization of Black Lives Matter. And that is truly a danger to uh, the Black community and to us as a, as a, as an, as a nation. <laughs> it's Black Lives Matter, the organization, is evil and it's corrupt. Uh, they are getting millions, if not billions of dollars <laughs> from uh, banks, from governments, and they are a very corrupt organization with a very evil agenda. And that's one of the big problems here is that the protesters and all these people that act like a voice for Black Lives Matter, the organization, is very, very dangerous. So I kind of want people to understand why I see them as an evil, uh, evil group I'm not trying to poison the well too much here, but I want people to understand that there is uh, something that we should know about this organization, because if we're yelling Black Lives Matter, if we're you know doing all these things, we're promoting this organization. So it's good to know what it is that we're promoting. Um, so first of all, I, I'm actually going to show you their website. And once you see their website, you'll understand that there's probably a good reason not to be supporting this organization. But I'm going to give you some just some background about Black Lives Matter. Uh, one of the things that started uh, uh, the whole Black Lives Matter movement was the, the whole um, uh, Michael Brown case. Now, if you know anything about the Michael Brown case, it is uh, the case of hands up, don't shoot. That was the narrative uh, that they were promoting. Um, so th what what is happening is that uh, they came in with the narrative that Michael Brown was this innocent, poor little kid uh, that the police stalked and then killed when he put his hands up and he was asking them, please don't shoot me. That, that's the narrative that they're trying to create. So what really happened was um, Michael Brown had actually was a big guy. <laughs> he was like a 
big guy, like six something, and maybe several hundred, a couple hundred pounds at least. He's a big guy. And he basically, um, he, he went into a store and he, you know, used his sheer size, his strong arm to rob, rob this little store, convenience store. Then he basically was walking in the street, walking in the middle of the street, you know, sort of proud of the fact that he just robbed a store. And a cop uh, came up to him and said, hey, you know, you're walking in the middle of the street. Can you kind of move over to the side? He didn't, I, I think the cop didn't know at that time that uh, Michael Brown had been, had robbed a store, but later found out that he had. Um, so what happened was he said, hey, move over. Now, Michael Brown actually attacked the cop and tried to beat him <laughs> with with his gun. He tried to take the cop's gun and tried to beat the cop with his gun. And then uh, the cop shot uh, Michael Brown uh, in order to defend himself. Basically, um, Michael Brown had done everything he could to try to, to kill the cop. And um, the cop had to defend himself. And the witnesses, which were actually black, because it was a black community, uh, defended the cop and the cop shooting of Michael Brown and said, hey, look, uh, he, he was defending himself and he should go free. And he did go free because it was a justified shooting. Now, the narrative that we always hear is the total opposite of that, right? That we have this innocent thing. They show pictures of Michael Brown that are always like these high school pictures that make him look like a little boy. <laughs> it's like always the same kind of narrative where they where they show this innocent black person. Well, he was not an innocent black person and he was trying to kill the cop. So that's the narrative. That's the story that they use to promote that started the organization. That's where the whole hashtag BLM came from. And they basically used that to create this massive organization. Uh, and when I say massive organization, I mean massive organization. They get like literally millions of dollars to promote their agenda. Now, what is their agenda? So I kind of want to get into that part of the, of the Black Lives Matter story. And I'm going to show you their website. So I'm just going to switch over here. This is their website. Now, if you look at their website, um, they are promoting, uh, you know, take action. And, you know, there's a lot of like activist kind of sentiment to this website. And they, you know, they talk about all the things that they're doing and, you know, all the people that they're trying to promote. And, you know, so it's, you know, you would think, oh, maybe this is not that bad of a organization. Now we click into about what we believe. Okay, so, you know, they basically, you know, they, they talk about uh, the basic stuff. Okay, so this is the stuff that people would read. And they would say, okay, you know, uh, we're committed to struggling together and to imagine and creating a free, a world free of anti-blackness, where every black person has a, has a social, economic, and political power to survive. Okay, sounds all good, right? It's like, you know, um, but then you got to kind of go into the weeds a little bit with their website. And what I kind of want to get to So here's here's where it gets kind of interesting. We make our spaces family friendly and enable parents to for, fully participate with their children. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts so that they can mother in private, even when they participate in public justice work. Okay, so one of the things that they sort of talk about is this whole anti-patriarchy thing. They also talk about here, we build space that affirms black women. So it's a lot of black women stuff here. Uh, it's free from sexism, misogyny, environments which men are centered. Uh, black trans folk, especially black trans women who continue to disproportionately be impacted by anti, uh, trans anti uh, antagonist violence. Uh, we foster queer affirming network. <laughs> so, so really what they're about 
is not necessarily black people that are actually suffering like these black men. Uh, they're actually about these other sort of um, intersectional ideas. They're, they're, they're against the patriarchy. So they're actually against the black family uh, for the most part. Uh, they, they want to support women, not the men in the, in the black family. So one of the things that they, you know, this is stuff that they kind of bury within their website there, but this is their true agenda that they're really about uh, supporting uh, these feminist causes and these uh, gay and lesbian causes that the, the, that community and they're doing it at the detriment of the actual black men. Um, and the goal is to uh, promote a socialist agenda where a socialist feminist agenda really. And that's what is not often understood. Um, I just wanna kind of go into some more of the stuff that they do. Um, and you'll see like her story in here you know, uh, they basically, and then they, if you read about the cool founder, founders, you can see that they're, you know, they're, they're all about uh, these, like this woman, uh, okay, <laughs> these, these women are not the greatest. Um, so if you read, like, you got to kind of read into the weeds, because what, what they're kind of relying on is that most people don't fully read their site. So if you read the beginning, it sounds all like good because you know, it's like she's protesting and stuff like that. And she's trying to bring out awareness of black issues. But then later what you see is most important, most important as a queer black woman, you know, <laughs> so, so her, her queerness, okay, is, you know, uh, the, is the is the real emphasis that they, they they're trying to promote and this is one of the the high up this is the co-founder okay so it's not about actual black issues like the issues facing the black community aren't police violence that's actually the thing i hate most about the whole black lives matter movement they they, they always focus on the very small issue which is uh police brutality right police um police problems with with the black community, but they don't focus on um, the bigger issues. Like uh, unarmed black men that got shot in America, all of America last year was nine, nine men. Okay. And uh, that's really not that many. <laughs> like, you know, there's like 10 million arrests and nine, nine were questionable, not even questionable, like, because even, even of that nine, maybe one or two were questionable. And then when they investigated, it turned out even those weren't questionable. So you're talking about a really small number, whereas like 7,000 blacks are killed uh, by, um, by gang shoot violence and inter-black uh, violence. So that is a bigger issue in my mind, <laughs> uh, nine compared to 7,000, okay? It's like almost, thousand times bigger issue and they never focus on that but to make things worse this black lives matter group um they don't even focus on any of that they just use the whole uh rallying cry of uh, oh these evil police are the problem well when there's actually bigger problems that are facing the black community and one of the biggest problems one of the reasons why there's so much black violence is the fact that the family structure within the black community is broken. You have a lot of single moms. It's like 70 to 80% of all black families are, ra are single moms. And that just is not a very good structure. It does not help uh, black children to become fully functional children. Uh, and what happens is when you have a non-functional person, <laughs> Well, they do stupid things and they get into, you know, they get into gangs, they, they get into drugs, they get into all these things that cause problems. And you see those problems manifest in the, in the community and it just makes more problems and so forth, you know. Um, so what happens is they're, they're not focusing on those big issues, 
and they're focusing on the small issue, which is a non-issue in my mind. Um, so what happens is you, you, you have this organization that's getting huge amounts of funding uh, and they're focusing on a problem that isn't a problem. And they're actually doing things that undermine the real problem that's facing black communities. They're, they're looking at breaking down that family. They, they don't like the patriarchy. They don't like black fathers. They don't like any of these things that are actually important to the black community. What they should be doing is fostering and encouraging more black fathers to be responsible for their children, but they're not doing that. They're, 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 they're focusing on the small problem. And if you read their bios, if you read their website, you'll see that really their focus is on promoting these uh, tra uh, tr uh, like uh, trans and queer and gay uh, agendas. And they're not really interested in helping the black community at all. Um, they're not really interested in supporting the men that need to be supported within the black community. And so when you have these protests that are promoting Black Lives Matter, it's not, first of all, it's not about Black Lives Matter because if Black Lives truly did matter, they would focus on the big issues, which is single motherhood rates and um, Black on Black crime. Those are the big problems. Those are the problems that are facing the Black community. So focus on those and hopefully solve it. That'd be, that'd be my hope. I would love to see the black community be much stronger, uh, much more successful, but until they, they fix these major problems, uh, the little problems of like, you know, police interactions uh, is, is not really gonna make any difference. Like, so, you know, they're, they're doing things that are just like, the other big issue with Black Lives Matter is they support a lot of terrorist kind of activity. So, you know, you get these peaceful protesters, protesters that are just like, you know, clinging to the Black Lives Matter, uh, matter um, hashtag, and they think that they're so virtuous and they're doing all this wonderful stuff for the Black community, but they, they really aren't doing anything. They're, <laughs> it's just like kind of virtue signaling. And then you have within the group, you have these people who are the violent agitators who are going in and they're, they're destroying buildings, they're burning down uh, businesses, they're doing real damage to the black community. Because like when those businesses burned, well, who did it affect? Well, it primarily was a lot of these businesses were within the black community. So these are businesses that actually support the black community. So these are businesses that su are supporting the black community they're providing jobs for the black community. They're providing uh, uh, services to the black community. And um, a lot of them are owned by uh, black people. <laughs> so uh, the narrative is totally wrong. Um, and it's very destructive to that, uh, that community. So, so what, what do we do here? Like, you know, we have this organization that's super evil. As I said, they're focused on the wrong issues and they're focused on a very socialist, uh, anti-male uh, agenda. And um, it's really the men that have the biggest problem within the black community. It's, as I said, boys especially need their fathers. They really need that male guidance so that they can become stronger and more, uh, more developed men. Like they have to be able to, you know, as a boy, as a man, you have to be able to balance the strength of being a man with the with the um, the discipline behind that strength. Uh, so it's sort of like it's almost like Spider-Man. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, men have the great power in terms of strength, in terms of those aggression and all that kind of stuff. But we also have to temper that with the great responsibility which is to basically uh, focus on discipline and control over our emotions, over our strength, <laughs> okay? So if you don't have that, you basically have like a ticking time bomb that's just going to go in and cause, you know, 
mass destruction. So, and that's what we see. We see that in the black community where these people are just, there's lots of violence. There's lots of destruction within the community. And we don't want that, <laughs> okay? So, um, and you'll notice in all this that I've talked about so far, I never mentioned racism because I see racism as like the smallest of problems. So like back to that police stat where I said, well, there's like 10 million arrests that happen and of them, like you get like nine <laughs> that are potentially questionable. And then of those nine, what percentage would even be racist? Probably none, but you know, so racism isn't the problem. And they, um, they do things where they, they point to like silly numbers, like, uh, you know, like where blacks are not performing as well as um, other, other races. So one of the things that they always point to is the inequality gaps between blacks and whites. They, 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 they usually use those two groups because if they, if they point out to the gaps between uh, whites and Asians, <laughs> Uh, there would be another story there. But the problem that they show is like between blacks and whites. Well, they say, okay, blacks on average uh, have less wealth than whites. And it's, it's, it's a considerable gap. It's like, uh, they, they say it's about 10 times, but I actually think it's less than that. But, you know, let's take their number. Let's say it's 10 times. Um, it's the case that if you, okay, so what is going on there? Well, in the black community, you have a lot of single mothers. And so when they create that stat, they look at family wealth. Well, if you have two parents compared to one parent, well, that's twice the potential income because you have two parents working rather than one parent working. And what happens is if you, so already that, that cuts the number in half when you have such a high single motherhood rate. The other thing is um, a single mother can't provide um, as much resources just because you, it's, you always, with, with two parents, you have like one can work uh, at some point when the other can, you know, they can sort of shift the responsibility of bearing, you know, raising the children. And uh, when you don't have that, what ends up happening is um, all that burden goes on to that one parent it doesn't matter if it's a man or woman, it really matters. It's just that it's one person having to bear all that responsibility. And what happens is they can't fully function at a high level to, you know, earn more money. You know, you know, basically if you're in a situation where you can't really work because you have to take care of children, well, you're going to miss opportunities because if you can work harder uh, and you know, you can, you can generally earn more money. So, not only you get half the income because of the fact that there's only one parent, but you also have this lack of opportunities because of the fact that they just can't take those opportunities. They can't actually, you know, actively at approach those uh, opportunities because they're, they're burdened with the responsibility of taking care of their children. So <laughs> what happens? You get, as a result, you get people that are generally not going to be as well off. And it, it gets multi-generational because what happens is the, the children are brought up, you know, without that father figure. They're they're not getting the the the, the well-rounded experience as a child that they really need. They need both the feminine and the masculine influence in their lives to be well-rounded children. And what you have is you get higher incarceration rates. You have higher dropout rates. You have all these problems, and that is a burden to black children. <laughs> and what happens is. You get that, you know, happening over a period of time and it's multi-generational and that just brings down those people. Now, this is not racism. This is not some kind of white supremacy. This is, these are issues facing the black community. And what happens is the reason for all this is you have a lot of these feminists and black uh, activists that are women that are promoting these feminist ideas of fighting against the patriarchy, fighting against men, uh, fighting against the black family. And that's what Black Lives Matter is about. They're about fighting against the black family. And that's the worst thing 
if you want to increase the wealth gap between whites and blacks, this is a good way of doing it by fighting against the black family. What they should be doing is doing everything they can to build that black family, to build this, you know, strong community, <laughs> not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, activists, but actually, you know, fundamentals, which is the black family and the black community. And one of the things is you got to realize that this is a very socialist way of thinking. A socialist way of thinking is that the family doesn't matter because what matters is the state, that they want, you know, government control over every aspect of people's lives. And Black Lives Matter, the organization, is all about uh, <laughs> promoting socialist ideas. They are socialists, okay? They, they want the government control over everything. Another thing that they're very against is anything that um, that would also prevent a lot of these black crimes. So what you want to do is if you really want to fight black crime, you, you fix first this, this family issue, but you also have to fix the actual crime issue. Now, if you're really worried about black lives, you, you'd be most worried about the people affected by black crime. Uh, not only the people that are, getting, that are killing each other, but the greater community at large. So what happens is, um, you know, you have people getting shot, you have people getting robbed, you have people getting raped, and it's very disproportional in the black community. It's, it's just, it's not even comparable, the amount of crime that happens in the black community compared to other communities. It's, it's just it's way out of whack. And what happens is that you know, has a negative impact on the community. It makes it very hard for them to be successful because they have this big weight that they're, that's burdening them down. And what you want to do is fix that problem of the black crime. Well, how do you do that? But usually what happens with um, the people that are actually affected by the crime is they report crime to the police. If, if somebody's breaking into your house, the first thing you do is you call the police. You say, hey, I have this guy breaking into my house. Please help me. And they'll call the police. So most of the reporting of the black crime is other black people reporting that crime. So this whole narrative that it's just these evil white cops going around hunting down black men and, you know, indiscriminately, like, you know, stopping and frisking them or arresting them. That's a completely false narrative. Usually what the case is, is it's other blacks saying, hey, look, somebody's trying to rob me. Somebody's trying to rape me. Somebody's trying to murder me. <laughs> Please help. And the police will go in there and will, you know, enforce the law. And the, the good people within these black communities want the police. They need more policing. But what happens is that organizations like Black Lives Matter, the big thing that they promote is defund the police. Take that, take that power out of the police hands. And what they're doing is they're trying to undermine the very community that needs the help. All the people that are impacted by the black violence. And nobody's willing to say this, but it's true. It's, it's a real problem that there's black violence. It's not white people, it's black people that are the problem. And you, you need police to basically help save the black community from itself. <laughs> so what you need is, you know, the good people within these black communities are impacted by the bad people in the black communities. And the good people in the black communities need police to help them. They want the police to come in and they want the police to enforce the laws. But as again, you have these protesters, you have these activists that are doing everything they can to undermine the very people that they should be helping. Like, why is it that they, they promote these black thugs? Why is it that, you know, you look at um, George Floyd, he is a horrible, horrible man. Just a, the, one of the worst people in our society. And they promote him as if he's some angelic figure. The, the Trayvon Martins, the, the Michael Browns, they're all horrible people. 
there's lots of good black people to be supporting, but they're supporting the worst, the worst elements. And it's again, it's because of this feminist narrative, this feminist agenda, where they hate black men. They really hate black men. And when I say that they hate black men, I, I mean, they literally hate black men. They are fighting against black men. This is Black Lives Matter I'm talking about, the organization. They hate black men. So the men that they support, the men that they promote, are the worst men. They want to show how bad the men really are. They, they actually, so they pick these men and they, they show them as like, as being the best of the black community when they're actually the worst of the black community. And so what does that do? That only makes uh, people hate black men even more. So another thing I really don't like about Black Lives Matter is this whole agenda to promote the worst men in the society. And what does that do? It, it only encourages actually people to be more racist. Because like if you, if you show me like, that, oh, you know, George Floyd is this wonderful guy. And you keep on saying, oh, he's like the best. He's like, you know, this angel within the black community. And I look at his rap sheet, which is a mile long, and that he, you know, takes a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach. And he, you know, is a druggie. And he's like, you know, a porn star, you know, doing all these horrible things. I, I think, well, you know, this guy is not a good man. And... <laughs> Why are you saying that he's the one of the best examples in your in your community? I'm, I'm, if that's the case, then I'm really going to be scared of your black community because this is if, if this is the best you have to offer, then I don't want to be even close to that society because they're a bunch of crazy people. <laughs> you know, it's like it's it's not a good sign. So um, you know, this is this is the kind of agenda that they have. They're they're trying to undermine their own black community. They're, they're doing things to promote the worst people in their community. So that's why you gotta be against Black Lives Matter. Like you have to understand that they're an evil organization. They have these horrible, horrible narratives that they're pushing, the horrible, horrible agenda that they're pushing. And they're, they're much more dangerous than people realize. They're, they're getting involved in the schools, they're promoting this agenda within the school system, they're, they're promoting, they're trying to get uh, like cities to defund the police. And as I said, the police are the very thing that the black community needs and relies on to protect them from themselves. <laughs> and they uh, are doing stuff to undermine the black community. So when you, when you hear people shout black lives matter, you know, there's a problem. You got to say, hey, look, don't shout that. Pick a different hashtag. Pick something else. Don't don't promote Black Lives Matter because it's an evil organization. You got to pick something else. Say, hey, you know, you know, something else, <laughs> something else. Pick something. Find some other slogan, because what you're doing when you promote Black Lives Matter is you're promoting an evil organization. Um, another thing that I didn't mention so far, but I, I really should mention is just the number of people that have been killed in the name of Black Lives, Black Lives Matter. It's, 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 it's staggering. Um, there's more people killed by Black Lives Matter than the KKK. So if you look at the last three to four years of Black Lives Matter, uh, and you compare that to uh, the last 30, 40 years of, of KKK murders, uh, it's much higher. <laughs> the number of murders that the Black Lives Matter is kind of connected to is much higher uh, than the, that of the KKK that they did in the last 30, 40 years. And the reason for that is the KKK, these evil white groups, I, 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 I hate the KKK because they're socialists, first of all, but they're also promoting things that I don't believe in. Uh, but they even are pretty, pretty small. They're like really not a very effective group. They're, they, they are pretty much right now a group that is just trying to get um, sort of white nationalist kind of uh, sentiments and they want to be left alone where, you know, have the ability to just be free whites, basically. 
Um, and they just want to be left alone. They don't want to really be involved with black people. And that's really their, their whole goal. They're racist, um, obviously, uh, but their goal is just to be separate. Uh, and that doesn't mean involving killing people. It just doesn't mean that they want to go out and kill people anymore. I mean, they, they, that, that was their MO for the longest time, but recently not so much. Um, whereas Black Lives Matter, it actively promotes the idea of killing white people. Uh, they actively promote the idea. Like there was like several tweets and uh, messages by the leadership of the Black Lives Matter movement that basically said that, you know, go out and find a white person to kill. And their supporters actually followed that. There was a reporter that was killed. There was like cops that were killed all in the name of Black Lives Matter. And you got to you got to say, well, is this a, a really good organization if they're promoting terrorism? Um, not only that they're going and killing people, like I, I look at the riots that just happened and more people, like twice as many people died in those riots than all of the people that died last year that are unarmed black men uh, last year in the United States. So what are they doing here? You know, they're, they're costing more black lives. They're damaging the black community. And that's why I say they're a terrorist organization. They're an evil organization. And to support Black Lives Matter is to support this evil agenda and evil organization. So I'm begging people, please visit the blacklivesmatter.com website. I'll link it in my description. Visit it. Read it. Not just the surface stuff. Don't read the surface stuff, because if you read the surface stuff, it all sounds great. It all sounds wonderful. Read the stuff at the bottom, <laughs> bottom of the pages. You'll find out that their real agenda is to basically bring out this socialist agenda, this feminist agenda. This, like when I say feminist, I mean extreme feminist, the, the, the radical feminist agenda, the anti-male agenda. And they are really about not supporting men, that need to be supported, but they're uh, about supporting these feminists, these gay, these uh, tr queer, transsexual, uh, socialist, <laughs> you know, that's their agenda. They're those, that's where they really uh, focus on. Um, so please check them out uh, and see for yourself. If you don't believe me, please check them out. And you'll see that using the chant Black Lives Matter is only helping fund and fuel this evil, hateful organization. So please check them out. Uh, please give me some feedback, comment about my video. Is there things that I miss? Is there there's more? If there's more that I could have said, please tell me. Um, you know, if there's things that I got wrong, tell me. Um, I'm open to dialogue. That's another thing that's very different between me and this organization. They're not open to discuss things. I am very open to discuss uh, this, it, these topics. And I, I want uh, every success for black citizens to, you know, to make the best of their lives. So, you know, <laughs> my goal as a white person, and I'm going to say this, and probably the goal of all white people is just to live in peace. Like, I just want to focus on my own life. I just want to, you know, not have to worry about this problem that's in our society. Like, if if the black community can sort itself out, that's half the crime. <laughs> it's literally half the crime that is, is in the U.S. is from the black community. If you can sort that out, just imagine how much better the world will be. So yes, I want to support the black community in that respect because it, it benefits me. <laughs> That's the, the goal here. And I, I, I want people to understand that, that there is no white supremacy. There's only white people who just want to be left alone and have a better life for themselves and for their community at large. And black people are part of that community. So black success is everybody's success. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out my other videos. 
And don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, ring, hit that ring notification thing because a lot of people are being unsubscribed. I lose subscribers every day because of the YouTube algorithm and I'm being shadow banned by YouTube. So please, you know, make sure that you're subscribed. If you're, you know, you might be unsubscribed. So just resubscribe and also hit that notification because there's a lot of content that I'm putting out that is stuff that nobody else is saying. Like I'm one of the few people that actually looked at the George Floyd case and said, Hey, look, there's something that we don't know here. And we, we got to sort of wait to make a judgment on it. And I'm the one of the few people that is willing to say the truth. Now I'm putting my neck out there and I want people to uh, sort of embrace my content. So please share this video as well. And um, thanks for watching.